Just to give a little plug and uh, tell you who we are, we're both instructional technologists from Fordham University. Um, I, used, I started out as a high school math teacher. I taught math for 10 years, and learning the technology was like a second job. And so I said, hmm, maybe they can pay me to learn. And so I was thinking I'll do that for a year or two and then go back, but it's been seven. So, uh, yeah, we, we love what we do. I'm also working on a book, everything that I've learned about education technology in the last 15 years, uh, almost 20, I guess. So if you're interested, you can go to the website and sign up. The first section is coming out this summer. Um, yeah, that's a screenshot. Okay, and I'm Lindsay Karp. I'm also a structural technologist. Um, I have a background in videography. I've done video just, um, for the last like 15 years or so. Um, I've been in a few film festivals, and so that's my main background. We also develop uh, media elements for fully online degree programs at Fordham University. So I have a lot of multimedia background as well. Okay, so there's three main points that we're hopefully going to cover today, and I'm probably going to talk really fast. If you have a question, stick your hand up. I'll stop. If not, we can get them at the end. Um, so I always like to start off with a little context first, because uh, to put this in perspective, we're really in a new information age. Um, this is a big deal. So writing changed the world, right? Before writing, there was no uh, shopping. <laughs> there was no uh, cross-pollinization of ideas. You know, like it's, it's, it's a completely new way of communicating. So instantaneously around the world, all of that. We've seen trends in the web so far started off with just information being pushed out, and then the last 10 years was really the social web. You have the interaction, you have blogs, comments, not having to know code to put information out or interact. And then I threw the last one in as a teaser. We're, we've started really in the age of the semantic web, which is kind of exciting, but not today. So internet use uh, started off really low. I graduated high school in 94, so the internet was around, but it was like nobody really knew about it. At least I didn't know about it. Um, but today, you can't go anywhere. How many of you go one day without using the internet? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like if you go to the beach, maybe. <laughs> or, or, uh, <laughs> But we're, we're, so, we're so used to being able to access information and communicate all the time. Also, just wanted to point out that there's so much information, and we throw these numbers out in gigabytes and terabytes. Um, a gigabyte worth of data is kind of like a pickup truck full of, of papers. But then in perspective, then the order of magnitude. Um, and then when you start talking video, because everybody loves video, um, it would take, this is, I think, just crazy statistics. So all of this information is being thrown at us, Twitter, Facebook, all of these different social networks. It's, it's started, anybody feel overwhelmed at times? Um, and something that Clay Shirky, he's, I think, at NYU said, really stuck with me. It's, it's not really so much that there's too much, it's just how we're filtering it. Um, I thought that was a really cool way to look at a perspective to look at it. So one of the filters is setting up these personal learning networks um, to help you out. Um, so it's about setting up these different channels to be a filter. And I'm not going to play the whole video because we only have 20 minutes, um, but I do want to play the, like the first 20 seconds. Will, Will Richardson is a, um, oh sorry, that was the last one. Will Richardson is one of my favorite people on Twitter. You should definitely be following him. He's fantastic. He's like one of those ed tech rock stars. Well, personal learning networks, I think, are, are really important in this environment because um, it's the first time in a long, long time that we can really get outside of the classroom and really begin to build kind of our own classrooms and our own curriculum. And so the change here is, or the shift here is, is that we can really connect around ideas that we're passionate about. That it doesn't matter where people are necessarily in physical space. What matters is that we can find them, that we can connect to them. And so this is huge. You're connecting by interest and not geography, right? So there's only four people at our university that do what we do. 
but we're not the only instructional technologists in the country. And so we're able to use this network to connect and see what they're doing, how it's working, and collaborate and share with them 24-7 on our time with a text message. Um, that's, that's pretty crazy. So it's, it's setting up a new way of learning, social learning. Um, this is another great guide to follow. He, don't worry, he's on the list. I have a list of like people to start off with by following. So there's this shift um, going on with personal development. It's not just showing up today at a 20-minute workshop. You know, this is something I learned how to use Twitter by educators that were using Twitter on Twitter. Very meta. Um, but it's making that connection 24-7. Um, there's, you can think of it as three different types, synchronous, asynchronous, semi-synchronous. We all do these kind of things. We run into colleagues in the hall, right? That's part of our personal learning network. Um, but this is just making it, I guess, a little formalized in a digital way. So the power of social, it's in the network, but, but it's important to remember it's always about the people. You know, it's about doing what we do in real time, just making that extension in digital space 24-7. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes because I, I think really, really speaks to this. Um, I've been making connections with people all over the country, all over the world, and it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm so excited about it. So personal learning network is the people. You might hear PLE. Those are like the tools that you would use. Um, so I kind of put them together. These are my favorite um, channels. I, I put Twitter first because I've gotten so much out of it. Um, start out with a lurker, right? I noticed most of you guys raised your hand, you were tweeting. There's not many people tweeting at this conference. It's mostly like vendors. Um, if you're tweeting, tweet with the hashtag in the next couple minutes so that we can go back. I'd love to throw you on a list and then I can share the list. You can just follow the list all at once. Nothing deep, that was my first tweet at work, um, right, but now it's one of my uh, important ones. So just to convince the people in the back that are not on the Twitter, um, this is usually like, people are like, oh, I'll never join Twitter, because <laughs> it's stuff like this, but it's really not. It's like all of these things, and it's making that connection to connect by interest, to share what you're passionate about. So I, I love that one. Lindsay, by the way, is mostly quiet because she's going to do the tools for task Thursday, and then I'm going to be the quiet one. So you will hear from Lindsay just not today. Um, this is the social wheel. If you haven't seen it, it's by Just Three. They have one where it blows up um, like 20, 2040, whatever pixels. So you can really see what's in each area. It's a nice way to get a snapshot of the different like social channels on the web. So talking about how you use it, it's really important to figure out who are you digitally. It's just like when you meet somebody, the first thing you're wondering is who is this person, right? What do they do? What are they into? Am I going to make it? Why would I make a connection with this person? So when you put your Twitter, your Twitter profile up, it's really 10 seconds or less people will make a judgment whether or not to connect with you. It's kind of crazy. So when you, when you set up your profile, that's the first really important step is make sure it's, it's you, you can look at one glance what I'm into. You say, well, I'm not into any of that stuff next. Or, oh, let me look at the tweets and dig a little deeper or look at the website and see if this is really somebody I want to connect with. Um, so name is nice. Um, using pictures, video is good. Uh, using favorites. I like to use favorites to save stuff. I connect it to my delicious account, which is social bookmarking. That way I can keep track of stuff easily. Um, I'm not going to say anything about delicious, even though it's killing me, but I have a link on the site that you can check out. Um, it's what first got me into ed tech, so hopefully we'll do a session on that at this, some point. Lists are great. I highly, I, this is one thing that I didn't do when I first started is take advantage of this and now 
I'm going through my Twitter list and kind of pruning and, and it's a real pain. Um, so when you follow somebody, I highly suggest also throwing them on a list. That way it's also an easy way to sort your tweets. It's like instead of just running into the hallway and running into somebody randomly, you're saying, okay, these are, you know, the people that are into math and these are the people that are into instructional technology and, you know, so that y you know exactly which department meeting you want to drop in on. Um, and it's also, lists can be shared, so you can share them with your colleagues and get them hooked on Twitter too, um, which is kind of neat. Um, your bio, it's only a sentence, make it count, try and be succinct. A lot of people will just kind of like use lists, that's cool. Um, location, don't be too specific. It's a good thing to turn location off in the settings, uh, security wise. But location's nice because then you can have a tweet up and meet people from Twitter in real life. Just cool. It's really neat to do that. Um, the link, make it to your blog or your website. I do more curating than blogging. Um, and then I don't choose to use a picture, most people do, but an avatar is okay too. Just don't be an egg. That really says like you don't care enough, you know, and who connects with somebody that, you know, it's just an egg, the default. The header, I went all out on the header, but they have some nice ones. Just don't pick a standard default, you know. Um, pin tweets are really cool. Take advantage of this because uh, if you, it tells you a little bit more, it tells people a little bit more about what you're about, you know, and that's how they make a, a judgment on whether or not to connect to you. So Twitter is a tool, so you got to think about how you decide to use a tool. So I use it. 90% of the time is professional development. Like I don't do too much socializing on it. So just tell you a little bit. Um, like Lindsay got into it. I was doing it mainly for uh, conferences and I found it very um, advantageous as a note taking tool. Um, I would tweet different quotes that I really resonated with me and to remember them. And um, I networked with other people who, we, there was a lot of concurrent sessions at this one person and someone kept asking me questions about it and then I found out later she wasn't in that session she wanted to be in it she was in another session so we were able to share ideas simultaneously what's going on in each session no. um, I also used uh, uh, an algorithm in IFTTT um, it's a if this then that website and I was able to program it to say anytime I use this hashtag I was able to aggregate and put in a Google Doc all the no. hashtags of that day so I had them as my notes when I wanted to reflect Which, on them. By the way you don't need to know any code to use that website and it sets things up automatically it's very cool I'll add it to the links. Um, I, I got into Twitter because the um, well I just like to explore stuff but our our faculty room had a big table where you can sit like maybe 15 20 faculty members and that's where people would sit and eat and talk about like you know what's going wrong and can, you know, offer suggestions and you always picked up like little professional development tips, right? But at the university we're at, there's no big table. So Twitter really has become my big table, but 24 seven. So that's how I use that tool. Everybody uses it differently. Some people use it like as an RSS feed, um, which is kind of cool. Well, I don't know. Uh, some people, again, use it more socially. Um, but I find it's, where is it thing? So some of the Twitter settings, it's, there's so many, but definitely some of the ones to check out are the security ones. Uh, some people miss that. And then when you're tweeting that you're in Boston, they're like, oh, this person is not home. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, um, okay, some mashups to use. I like Paperly because it takes your feed and makes it like into a newspaper. You can automate it. Um, and it also gives shout, shout outs to people that are in your network, which is always kind of cool. People like to, you know, um, a little recognition. Storify is also really great. Um, it makes like little magazine stories um, out of like, we use this a lot for conferences to collect and share what, what went on. Packratus is the plugin I mentioned earlier. If you do, anybody use social bookmarking? Delicious. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, so this will automatically um, import all of your favorites and retweets and tweets into Delicious. So who to follow, where to follow them, this is a big question. Um, we, we've got all of these different channels. Uh, you know, most of these are relating to people that you know just digitally. Twitter is kind of like the flip I think most people meet uh, online. So just remember communication, it's about conversation, collaboration. So don't self-promote all the time. You know, somebody throws a question out there that you can respond to, respond, make a connection. Um, so, have to throw Star Wars in there. Uh, where do we find these people? Blogs, websites, all of the icons are getting really fancy, but they all look like birds. They're usually blue. Um, hashtags, and I'll talk a little bit more about hashtags in a second. Even tweets, some people will add people in their network to a tweet. You can find people that way. Um, and then, of course, if you're lucky enough to trend on Twitter. Um, in real life, yes, I'm geeky enough to put that on my bag. Um, at, you know, you have a conversation with somebody that you want to continue. You want to see, you know, what their text messages about the web are. You can say, so what's your handle? Uh, conferences. Some people, I, I didn't write it on my badge because I just I put it on my bag. But some people have been throwing it on their badge, handwritten. Um, meetings, workshops. Some people, of course, find you when you retweet other people's stuff. Um, when you tweet at other people, it's you know, it goes into their network and they see it, and somebody else sees it, and that's a way to connect. But I think the most powerful way to connect is through this hashtag, you know, uh, meeting by interest, not not geography. So there's. Um, this guy Bill came up with hashtag bracketology, which I thought was a really cool way of organizing different uh, hashtags. There's hashtags and there's hashtags that use um, that are chats. So these chats happen usually uh, dedicated time every week, and people kind of vote on questions ahead of time, and they keep archives. And there's a really cool Google Doc that organizes all of this that you can. Um, do like Command F or Control F to search for your topic. I have a link on one of the links, and I'll show you. That's the last thing I'm going to show you where everything is. Um, but these are my favorite. I actually played this out. I have this on my Flickr page if you want to see it. I had to go with EdChat. Um, but there's all kinds. There's a, there's a there's a chat for what you're interested in, guaranteed. Oh, here it is. Sorry, I put it in. Uh, so I did, I went with uh, Ed Chad. And of course we played this in March. So maybe next year we'll all play together and I'll see what chats you guys are following. Uh, how do I do it? Twitter clients, apps. Right now I think probably the mobile is the most popular way to go. Instead of playing Candy Crush while you're waiting for the train, you know, you can just tweet. Um, I also like picking a day like Friday. Friday is my fun day. I try and focus on like project kind of stuff and um, you know fun stuff. So I always fit Twitter in somehow, some way on Fridays. Some people fit it in part of their email routine, right? They spend an hour, probably more out of their day. We spend like too much time, but they'll you know dedicate like a specific time. Um, to Twitter. So time is not so much a barrier. And we have like three minutes. Yeah. Okay. I just want to show you because I only put um, two links up here, but these links kind of go to like lots of links. So the first one is a talk that I did at the university really recently. It's actually all the slides, most of the slides I just went through, but we I cut it with the audio from it, so if I went too fast or you want a little bit more detail, uh, check that out. Um, I also have, this is that index to the Ed Chats. I was so glad to come across this link. This is like gold. Um, it's a Google Doc, so you can download it or import it, but more importantly, you can search it. Oh, that's right. Um, more importantly, you can search it, so you pick your interest. Come on, load. Oh, 
I might have to update that link. What is this one? So you pick your interest or time of day or day of the week, whatever. There's, a, there's one that happens every morning at 5.30 in the morning, uh, BFC Breakfast Club. That's really good and frequently trends. They've got great chats. Uh, what is school is another one. Um, Twitter directories, if you're looking to find stuff, people do use these so they can be helpful. Um, and then the second link that I gave you, this is uh, a little bit more detail. Actually, this first link, for those of you just getting started, is probably the best blog post I've come across on why you should be using it. Um, but they have all kinds of things that you might not have considered. And then some infographics. This is the one I mentioned, Conversation Prism. Different tools. We mentioned these tools. Um, and then even more links. So please tweet us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to make a list of our campus tech people. Um, and we'll share that. We'll update the page. And thanks for coming. Uh, if you missed us in the beginning, we had a handout. Um, we have it by the projector if you wanted to pick one up on your way out. I didn't get you already. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>